Hello, thank you so much for stopping by. Welcome to this no code tutorial. So it's so good to have you here. Hope you're doing all right. Hope you're great. Today, I want to show you how to set up Firebase in Flutterflow. So all you have to do is watch this tutorial and you'll be able to set up Firebase in Flutterflow. So you're ready? Let's get started. If you've not subscribed to my channel, click on the subscription button below and I'll definitely, definitely, definitely do well to you know send you notifications whenever I launch a new video and don't forget if you're if you're looking for a no code dev I mean you want to be something of flow flow feel free to reach out to me and I'll help you out thank you so much let's get started so before we get started setting up our Firebase console I really want to show you why you need to have Firebase the benefit of having Firebase in your mobile application so Firebase itself is an SDK, is an SD, is an SDK, uh, which is some which is a, a, a software development kit for just think of it as something that contains a lot of tools that you need to build your mobile application. So it's a backend as a service. You know when you want to build your application, you need a backend developer, you need a frontend developer, you need a whole lot of persons. But Firebase is simplifying the way you build your application. So it's just offering you a whole lot of service that you can use to deliver quality applications. Some of the things that it gives you, it gives you a real-time database to store things in your application. It gives you analytics because when you're installing Firebase, you just install Google Analytics also. It also gives you the ability to understand when your when your 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 when, when there's crashes in your applications. It gives you the ability to, to understand that. It also gives you the ability to it also gives you the ability to very fast and secure web hosting. You can use authentication. So like on your application, you can use Google application, Apple, email, phone signing right off the bath with not, without, you know, without doing anything too complex. Also, there is storage. You can store your videos, your images. You know how difficult it is on other local platforms where you can't really store bug files. You want to store images, you have to go use AWS. You want to store videos, you have to go use a different platform entirely. That's something that this, that's something that using Firebase eliminates. Use Firebase on your Flutterflow account and you don't have to set up anything else. Also, if you're someone who's interested in machine learning, this is going to be very exciting for you because you're able to use machine learning right off the bat. What's, what's, what's there again? You can send notifications and messages to your audience anytime you like. And this is what I love so much, dynamic links. You know, when somebody sends you a YouTube video links, you are able to click on that link and go to YouTube, right? Same thing. When you share your, your application with people, they're able to click on that link and then go back to your application. So if they've not downloaded that application, it will link them to, to, to uh, the Play Store. But if they've downloaded it, it will lead them to the app, open it, and take them directly to that particular page they're looking for. So these are so many of the opportunities that you'll get, so many of the benefits that you'll get when you get to use Firebase in your application. So now that you know how that works, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, this is a demo app that I've created. So I'm just going to load it. So this is the demo application. Uh, it's just a template. So it's a demo application. And as you can see, it has database feeds already. Uh, it has database feeds already. So what I want you to do is to go to your settings. So when you get to your settings, I want you to click on Firebase. So when you click on Firebase, you can see Flutterflow is expecting you to do a couple of things. It's expecting you to add your Firebase ID. It's expecting you to have all this stuff. So they are, they are, they are nice way of doing this now. I mean, simpler way of doing this, but we're just going to go with the old way of doing it because it's pretty easy, faster, and uh, easier to to do so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get our firebase project id this is the only thing you need to act to to lot to set up your firebase to set up your database so you can connect your flutterflow application with firebase so let's go ahead and do so so next first thing first go ahead and click on the plus sign so you can add a project give the project a name you can give it any name so i'm just going to call it car fleet 
I'm going to call you Calculate. It's fine. Then just continue. That's the ID. Uh, create. No, I don't. I'm not. Okay. This is the analytic I told you about. So if you want to create a Google Analytics here, this is what I told you about. That's one reason why F uh, Firebase is super cool. So click on the continue button. Select an account. Okay. I'm just going to select my personal account for this one. Uh, I'm going to se select the demo account. Okay. I'm going to select my personal account. <laughs> That's right. So I'm going to create a project. So it's going to take a few seconds. Depending on how fast your internet connection is, it's going to take a few seconds for for um, Firebase to provide all the resources that you need for your personal application to run. So we'll just hold on for this to to finish up. Okay, so now we're done here. Click on continue, and next dashboard you see, you would see your entire, um, you would see this dashboard, and this is super awesome. So, next thing that you want to do, you want to come right here, click on users and permissions, and you're going to be the product owner. That's it. But now you want to add Firebase to your Flutter Flow to your project. So, and the way you add it is that you add this email, which is Firebase at Flutterflow.io, and give it the role a detour. That's what you want to do, and say add member. If you think I'm too fast, you can always go back and rewind the video and just watch it all over again. So, when you add member, click here to open advanced permission settings. Advanced permission settings. So you have to give Flutter, uh, Firebase, you have to give Fire, uh, Flutterflow some rights so they can manage your application on your behalf. So that's why you're doing this. Some of the, so many things you're going to be doing is going to be in the cloud. And so you need to give Fire, uh, uh, Flutterflow that ability to actually do things when you're not there. You don't just act like you, but this time you're giving it the editor role. You can always go ahead and delete it, delete, uh, remove Firebase from your, you know, Flutter flow from your application if you want to. So click on the pencil icon. That's what you want to do. And then say add row. Say add row. And the first row you want to add is the cloud function admin. That's the first row you want to add. This one. Yeah. Then when you add this one, add another row like this. Add another row. You want to add the service account user. Service account user. Service account user. So once you're done with this, say save. That's all you have to do. It's going to save. Then you can go back to your, yeah, the policies. Just update the policies. Yeah, that's all you have to do. And then you can go back to your, you can go, go back to your mobile, to the Firebase console where you manage your product. So next thing that you want to do, just follow it through. The next thing you want to do, click on the build drop down. You would see the drop down and just click on Firebase database. That's what you're going to do. So it should come up with something. So you want to click on the on the create database. So this is where you're just going to create your own database. Say test mode. When you're moving your app to production, then you can you can say production mode. So just click here next. Just enable. It's fine. I think the default settings are great. But when you're choosing location, you might want to choose the one that's closer to where you live. So I live in Africa, and most of the most of the cities are not pretty close. So I just use the default. So once you're done with this part of it, you should be able to create database right here so the way you normally do it the way you normally do it is to just click on the start collection call it a name and then you're good that's the way you normally do it because if you are not using a pro account like i am i'm using a pro account so that's why i have these privileges to create database 
to create database here and then it reflects to create database on fire on flutterflow and then it reflects in here but if you're not using a pro account you have to create it twice you have to create the database here like the way we have a user like here you have user you'd have to come back to your application to your application click on the database right here and then click on the plus then you need to have you need to create a collection with the same name if it's different it's not going to work so let's go back to our settings that's where we are at. so this is, where, this is where we are at firebase id so once you're done with this don't worry you don't have to create any database you can sign up for the trial or you can sign up for the pro account it's fine you have to create something else so let's go let's go go there and say storage click on the build again click on storage so the reason why you're clicking this by default you this will be this would have been would have been set up before you but you just want to be very sure yeah you just want to be very sure that it was set up correctly and it's fine if this is not working there is no way absolutely no way you can store things like images videos on your database so next thing that you want to do is um next thing that you want to do is to go to your go to your app oh no no not hide sorry, shortcut next you want to do is to go to your project click on users and uh, users and permissions oh not your project forgive me i think you want to go to authentication that's where you want to go to here right here authentication go to authentication so you want to allow phone signing that's what you want to do get started you don't have to bother about the other ones that's you're gonna to have to you, you don't have to add uh, google you don't have to add game center apple github or any of this just go ahead and say phone signing that's fine for the now that's fine so once you do this you'll be able to create users so let's go i saw something that i think you should you should know okay i think we did storage before there is machine learning so you can go ahead and explore all this you can go ahead and explore all this with your account and you're not really going to have anything terrible happens so let's go ahead and test our project so uh, before you do so i want you to copy this this is your id copy it go back to your flutterflow account and just paste it there that's it Voila. paste it there and say config file let's see flutterflow doesn't have access to this account add flutterflow as the editor in the project so flutterflow is the editor in the project let's go ahead and see who are the users again users and permission now that's users and billing so let's go to users and permissions Oh wow, why? Okay, uh, Flutterflow is not here. So we're supposed to add Fire, Fire, Flutterflow as the editor of this project. So I'm very shocked because we did it before. Uh, I'm very, it's, uh, I'm surprised that this is not working because we've done it before right here. This right here, Firebase console. So let's go ahead and just add it here all over again. Let's do so. Uh, let's do so, okay. Let's do so, let's give it a row in detail. Give it a little row, say done. Let's add member and see what comes up now. So, okay, I think this is trouble with uh, the console. So you can see the, ro the, the, the roles we assigned to it is still there. The two roles we assigned to it is still there. So let's go back to our Firebase application, our Flutterflow application. Forgive me, I'm saying Firebase Flutterflow. Oh, the FF. So click on connect. This should work now. Yeah, so it's working. Then click on regenerate config file. Generate config file. That's what you want to do. It's going to take a because it's going to take a few seconds to complete these uh, regener regenerating the config file. You don't have to reload this right now. You don't have to reload this while it's generating the file. 
just leave your PC just that way. So then just go ahead and upload this one. Say yes. Okay. Go ahead and deploy. Okay, not deployed. We're having deploy error. Let's go to our database. Click on your database. Click on the settings. Click on the settings. So one good thing about 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 when you come here and you're not you've not created an app already, you just created an app for the first time, it will ask you to choose a user collection. So Flutterflow would come with a default collection called users, but you would have to select it when you're creating the database. So let's go ahead and just you know deploy this and see what happens. Let's deploy. So now that's working. Let's go ahead and validate this. So after validating it, I think we'll be all right. So we'll have to go back there and uh, we'll have to go back there and set up the rooms. Without the rooms, we might not be able to do a few things. We'll have to go back to the settings and screw down and say deploy. Let's try this all over again. So these are storage rooms. Now it has been deployed. Awesome. If you got to this place, congratulations to you. So let's go ahead and add stuff to our database to just be sure that it's working. So what you want to do is click on this 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 uh, collection. That's what it's called. And click on manage contact. And here we want to just add a few things to our database to make sure that it's working. So while that's loading, this is the flood of flow. The flood of flow database can be a bit tricky can be a bit dynamic it's a no sql database so it might be a bit difficult for you to do that this if you check out my channel you're going to see um there are going to be other videos that will help you to that will help you to connect that will help you to create your database and also connect pages together so um that for that let's just keep going this is still loading so i i i had someone talked about today about marketplaces how marketplaces might not be a whole might not be so great there might be a whole lot of hard work so i just want to really know what you think about marketplaces do you think it's a very valuable startup idea or do you think it's so much work because you have to cater for a lot of persons some persons are saying that it increases the cost of um, of doing business so just tell me i would really want to hear your opinion here so let's go ahead and say add document just create don't worry you don't have to fill it with anything just create it we just want to see that our uh, users is showing so click on product name click on create just go ahead and create it that's all so let's go back to our console let's go back to our console click on the retime database click on the retime firebase the firebase database Firebase database, we should see some of the things we've created on Flutterflow. If we see it, that means it's working correctly. So you can see we have the product name and we have the user. So what this means is that it's working perfectly. You can go ahead and ask your users to sign up and it's going to sign up really, really perfectly. So that's how you would sign up. You would set up your, your Flutterflow database. But for you to do it this way, without for you to be able to create create a uh, um, database collection on your firebase without on your firebase directly from flutterflow you need the pro plan but if you are, if you don't have the pro plan it's something similar but you have to come here and create collections first the same collections and create those relationships then you go back to flutterflow and do the same but i'm going to explore more i'm going to explore this further when i show you how to create database in firebase so um so that's that's it that's how you will do it that's how it works i hope you enjoyed this tutorial do go ahead and subscribe and if you're looking forward to building a a project with with flutterflow feel free to reach out to me and i'll do all to help you out thank you so much for watching do have a very very beautiful day ahead